Okay, yeah, perfect timing. Thanks, everybody. Um, sure, yes, so uh, for our next session, although the session of, well, we're, we're split into small sessions, our next talk, um, happy to introduce uh, Artemis Colignou, who's joining us from the, uh, the HPST uh, in, in Paris with a really exciting talk on uh, metaphysics and biogeography, so please. Yes. So, hello, um, and first I would like to thank the organizers for having me. Uh, so, I'm going to discuss today um, about the topic that I'm actually working on, and it's part of my PhD research. Um, so, the title for this presentation is Assessing Metaphysics Through Biogeography What is the Nature of a Biogeographical Entity? An Ontological and Epistemological Investigation. Um, so, uh, um, before I start, I would like to explain uh, a little bit what uh, biogeography is. Um, biogeography is, uh, broadly speaking, uh, the discipline that aims to explain the species distribution on Earth's uh, surface. Uh, and it is a discipline uh, found in the intersection of other disciplines such as evolutionary biology, ecology, geography, systematics, geology, um, paleontology. And uh, actually Michel uh, Morange uh, referred to biogeography in his book A History of Biology. Uh, and I'm quoting, uh, biogeography is an excellent example of the recurrent difficulties uh, that biologists experience in articulating and or prioritizing the mul mul multiple causalities at the origin of living phenomena. Uh, yes, so um, um, modern biogeography has its origins in the 18th and the 19th centuries, where the pioneering work of naturalists and explorers on biotic specimens inventories and on the description of the physical geography can be uh, situated. And uh, what uh, particularly interests me is the concept of biogeographical areas or regions. Uh, so, uh, biogeographical area, also called uh, area of endemism, uh, can be designated by the geographical distribution of species or taxa in present actual time or in past geological time. Uh, such an area is characterized by a particular group of species or uh, more generally by endemist. Uh, see for example uh, the distribution of polar bears in the North Pole uh, or the, the um, past lungfish uh, that had a Gondwanian uh, distribution um, so it's been 200 million years uh, at the present as the present distribution can uh, show. Um, <coughs> So, um, this concept of uh, particular regions of the globe that are characterized by taxa and began to rise uh, in the 19th century, especially with the work of Augustin Piham de Condon and other prominent naturalists such as Alfred Wallace and Philip Sclater, who promoted the uh, regionaliza uh, regionalization of the Earth's surface uh, as they proposed the uh, zoogeographical uh, regions of the world. Uh, now, uh, in modern research, uh, biogeographical areas constitute a mass, much debated concept uh, within the scientific community uh, regarding their definition, their empirical, uh, mostly their empirical discovery and their spatial-temporal delimitation as um, uh, material objects. And uh, more recently, uh, authors um, Brian Crowther and Christopher uh, Murray proposed, as they called it, an ontological debate on the nature of these entities. Uh, they stated that areas of endemism uh, can be considered analogically to species and taxa as historical individuals and not classes in the sense of uh, universals. And uh, moreover, uh, the, concept of, the concept of the geographical area has um, a special place uh, within a sub-discipline um, of biogeography. Uh, precisely, it is the fundamental unit of uh, study for cladistic uh, historical biogeography. 
Um, the principles of this discipline uh, also imply uh, an analogy between biogeographical areas and species, and taxa in general. And I will say a little bit more on how they are treated as objects of phylogenetic analysis in a while. Um, so my, my aim today uh, would be to examine these two points regarding the epistemic and ontological uh, sta status of biogeographical entities. Uh, in particular, I will address the scientific representation uh, of these entities as objects of analytical cladistic method in the sense of uh, Zaragueta and Peco uh, uh, of 2016 and uh, uh, Pham of 2012. I will then introduce how one could seize the nature and realism of such complex entities. Um, yes. uh, to do so, I will begin with a rapid re uh, presentation of cladistic theory uh, and its principles. Uh, cladistic theory, so the theory uh, of um, phylogenetic <coughs> systematics uh, relies on descent with modification and on homologous uh, traits between organisms, so uh, that relationships of uh, propriety uh, can be inferred. Uh, in general, the scope of phylogenetic systematics is to infer um, the evolutionary uh, relationships of taxa by grouping them uh, on the basis of morphological or molecular uh, traits, also by grouping them based on different uh, criteria and methods. Uh, the relationships of propiquity are then translated uh, into phylogenetic trees uh, or taxa cladograms, as you can see. Uh, that's a very simplified <laughs> vision of them. Um, so, uh, cladograms are actually uh, graphs uh, formally represented mm -hmm. by dichotomous trees. And in a cladistic framework, they translate degree of uh, propiquity. Taxa are then considered as sets of classes uh, in the mathematical sense of set theory. And as Zaraguita and Pico put it, and I quote them, uh, taxa are treated by method of analytical uh, abstraction. Uh, in the details of the exact uh, procedure uh, would be out of scope uh, today. So, uh, species and more inclusive taxa are treated as mathematical absolute objects by this um, by an analytical method uh, in a Cartesian sense. Uh, so, um, with that assertion in, in mind, uh, I will now pass on um, by geographical areas. Uh, cladistic by geography had been founded by systematists uh, Don Rosen, mm -hmm. uh, Garrett Nelson, and Norman Platnick in the, in the 70s and the 80s. And the aim was to discover general patterns of geographical distributions of species and taxa. For that, uh, Rosen in, 70, in 1978 was the first researcher to derive area cladograms from taxon phylogenies. phylogenies. Um, and the general principle for this was to uh, replace taxa and taxon phylogeny by the areas in which uh, these taxa are distributed. And the area cladogram is then deri uh, derived when a particular structure of relationships is repeated. Uh, the repetition is an indication of common history. So, uh, by geographical areas are operationally treated as taxa in phylogenetic systematics. Um, uh, so, uh, an interesting philosophical consequence of the formal approach of cladistic biogeography is that one can assign to biogeographical areas an analogous status as that of species, but in a more integrative level. Um, Precisely, biogeographical areas would designate units of biodiversity, but also evolutionary uh, units. Uh, the latter uh, is supported by an explanatory model uh, based on a process called vicariance. Vicariance is the name for uh, biogeographical diversification and is a process very similar 
uh, to that of allopatric speciation. Uh, allopatric speciation had been proposed by Ernst Meyer in Portis uh, regarding the interruption of the flux of genes of a population by a physical barrier uh, so that new species populations uh, could arise. Now, uh, Vicarians uh, <coughs> describes an analogous process. Uh, an initial by geographical uh, area is fragmented by a physical uh, barrier of large scale. That could be the fragmentation of a continent, for example, um, or uh, diverse geological events, mm -hmm. uh, the formation of uh, a river, um, something like that, a forest uh, or a mountain. And uh, so this barrier would affect at the same time the geographic region, but also the species that inhabit that area. So the initial area uh, is differentiated in the course of time to different uh, areas. At the macroscopic level, uh, the current explains the, the diversification of biogeographical areas and their differentiation, and uh, shows the causal links uh, uh, between species evolution and their geographical distribution. Even if uh, a scientist could face many difficulties such as migration and dispersion of single uh, species lineages, events of uh, geographical uh, reticulation, uh, etc. Uh, one of the scopes of cladistic biogeography is indeed providing a historical explanation which juxtaposes biological and geological uh, geographic data so that hypotheses of macroevolution can be inferred. Um, now that I have um, rapidly uh, so um, uh, exposed these 10 points, um, I would like to investigate some epistemic and ontological difficulties that arise and then discuss a little bit uh, on nature of biogeographical areas. Um, so, uh, firstly, um, I uh, would like to address the philosophical attempt of authors uh, Crowther and Murray uh, of 2011 and of 2015, who stated that biogeographical areas are historical individuals in the same way bi biological species are. Uh, likely, areas of endemism consist <coughs> of parts, uh, the species that inhabit the area and the area uh, itself. The combination of these two parts makes up a whole, which is thereby an individual, so the area of uh, endemism. Further, furthermore, such an area cannot be defined by intention, by, uh, but uh, it is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it cannot be defined by intention, a list, so a list of specific uh, properties found to every area of endemism, but, uh, on the contrary, um, it is defined by extension. Uh, so, but, uh, by different examples, uh, one can find in nature. Uh, this kind of entities uh, exist historically, in the sense of a unique realization in time and space. And even though they have fuzzy, spa uh, even though they have fuzzy spatial-temporal uh, boundaries. And uh, they also respond cohesively to change. Um, so I would like to examine uh, the assertion individual of these authors. Um, so uh, Crowther and uh, Murray implied that if a species is considered an individual, then a biogeographical area is too. Uh, these two authors applied, if, in fact, the, the individuality thesis of uh, David Hall and uh, Michael Gislam to areas of endemism. Crowther and Mary uh, claim, claimed for an ontological debate on areas between individual and classes and opted for individuality, but uh, they did not take into account uh, the fact that um, um, assumptions on biological species are, are largely based on the observable objects on which a scientist rely on to, which are the organisms uh, in general. Biogeographical areas are not, uh, at least uh, in a direct uh, way, um, the same observable materialistic objects. Uh, 
in the case of, bi of biogeography, I think it is uh, in intuitively demanding to apply a strict ontological analogy between biogeographical areas and species uh, based solely on um, the individuality thesis in order to address the nature of biogeographical areas. Uh, just uh, uh, some attempts taking into account the individuality of ecosystems, namely their degree of individuality as uh, proposed by in, man, uh, in 2014 would probably be a more appropriate solution uh, to invoke for the geographical areas uh, too. Um, uh, so, uh, moreover, uh, this, uh, the um, thesis on species individuality had been continuously discussed within the philosophical and scientific uh, communities. Uh, for example, uh, Jean Gaillon uh, highlighted the fact that they are not uh, the species that exist in space and time by birth and death, and death uh, but organisms are. Uh, indeed, many scientists support that species would rather designate taxonomic rank, so uh, a category, uh, and that would make them human conventions, uh, as uh, and I cite uh, the work of uh, Guillaume Lecointe, uh, for example. Um, and in <coughs> addition, the delimitation of species in biological terms uh, is a very demanding task for many uh, example uh, examples. Um, because, for example, uh, Thomas Pradeau, in, in his work uh, in, in a paper of 2016, uh, questions, for example, um, the fact that uh, colonies, uh, bacterial colonies, uh, uh, could be considered as, as uh, a sort of individuals, too, uh, biological individuals. <coughs> um, so, um, I would propose that the debate on whether a geographical area is an individual or a class uh, would rather rely on epistemic investigation than uh, ontological. And uh, as I have uh, shown, it would probably be uh, more appropriate to extend this kind of debate on the operational uh, level of scientific method and representation uh, models. Uh, Moreover, biological classification, uh, largely elaborated by the discipline of phylogenetic systematics, is based on species concept and thus on organisms, seen as biological individuals. At the same time, they are methodologically uh, represented as classes. So, um, the debate, namely ontological, uh, between individual or class, uh, could bias the scientific endeavor because, in fact, uh, there is a gap between the operational level of representation, the empirical level, uh, and lastly, the ontological level. Uh, indeed, the non-clarification of this gap has led researchers uh, to state that the ontology of areas of endemism, based solely on whether an area of endemism is an individual or a class, um, in an effort of biogeographical classification is of no interest uh, for the scientist. Uh, that was stated by uh, Malte Ibak and uh, Michaud in 2017. Um, and as I have shown, uh, this kind of inquiry would rather concern scientific method and epistemic framework than mere uh, ontology. Uh, so the term species as the term taxon uh, designate uh, actually classificatory concepts that are constructions uh, and that are applied most of the time to individuated objects, uh, so single organisms or even groups of organisms that can be observed. Um, so, as I said, I, I would rather account for the operational uh, delimitation of areas of endemism. So, how to uh, deline delineate uh, uh, such an area in space-time um, uh, 
uh, which criteria, uh, which level of uh, endemism, for example. Um, uh, those are questions that uh, I think are, are, are critical for a scientist to, to uh, endeavor. And uh, so, um, uh, I would propose so to distinguish the entity, so the nature of the entity and its representation. Uh, and uh, so, uh, nevertheless, um, uh, that would be uh, my last uh, proposition. Uh, the ontological um, investigation of a biogeographical area would be of great interest if related uh, to a historical approach to these entities, uh, which uh, also applies for species. <coughs> um, and this kind of um, this kind of approach would imply causal uh, explanations or. Ex planetary models like the carrions or allopatric speciation, speciation and would take into account contingency. Uh, by geographical areas would then be considered as realistic, historical and natural entities endowed with an ontological uh, status analogous to that of species in uh, evolutionary uh, biology and uh, systematics. And I think I'm going to finish here. Perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll register on John. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, that was really great. And I like the idea of just thinking about geographical areas as entities. I think that's really interesting. Um, but I wanted to ask you about what some of these people have in mind. Like, I think it was uh, Crowder and Murray, when mm -hmm. they talk about areas as individuals. Because, um, you know, you can certainly think of, you know, in climate science we do this, and various other areas we think about this. We think about parcels of geographical area as a parameter, right, in describing the phenomena that we're interested in. But do they give uh, a reason for thinking about it uh, these things as individuals in the way that we as philosophers would think, you know, individuals are distinct from classes, they have different kinds of properties, right? Do they give a justification for thinking about them in terms of an ontological category, the way that we might think? Is, you know, because I, even in Gislin and Hull, when they talk about species, they say, well, they're individuals. And when I hear that as a philosopher, I think, well, you know, individuals that are interesting things to be said about them, they're part whole relations that distinguish them from other kinds of assemblies of things and so on and so forth. And I'm not sure they thought about these things as carefully as we might like, right, to justify a label individual. To these guys, when they talk about why uh, geographical areas as individuals, <coughs> do they give an account of the necessary and sufficient conditions for individuals such that this qualifies as an individual? Yeah. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, uh, well, uh, firstly, um, uh, this was uh, um, one of the first attempts to uh, to approach uh, philosophically uh, this kind of entities. Um, uh, uh, so uh, the authors. Um, uh, are, are, are scientists uh, that uh, um, um, I think um, in, in, in fact their, their inquiry uh, um, uh, begins from the fact that in uh, scientific literature um, they, uh, uh, they are it, it, it's an, it was an effort, uh, uh, it had been an effort to um, develop uh, a classification uh, for biogeographical areas in the same sense uh, of uh, species classification. So, um, <coughs> and, um, and that effort of classification stems from the 19th century, from the first works of uh, naturalists that uh, discover that uh, there is a 
some regions of the world uh, that are characterized by a particular uh, um, group of uh, species or a particular species uh, and and that there is no, um, uh, there is not only the ecological factors that affect the uh, distribution of species on Earth uh, surface, but uh, actually, as we know nowadays, nowadays it is uh, the the history, um, so the historical contingency um, of evolutionary history. Actually, well, so uh, the authors Prother and Murray. Um, I think uh, they, they proposed, uh, um, so uh, as I said, I think they proposed uh, to consider areas of endemism uh, uh, as individuals. Um, well, uh, in, in biology, there is uh, a debate uh, that continues um, on uh, whether uh, uh, an entity, so a species, is an individual or a class. But what I tried here uh, to, to do, to rapidly do, is to show that um, this debate is not uh, only an ontological one, but it is based on scientific method because um, actually uh, species are treated, are represented, uh, that is uh, what I would like to highlight, to highlight is that are represented as classes uh, by um, uh, um, uh, models and algorithms. Um, and I think this point is not very um, clear within the scientific community. Um, so, um, I think the authors, Crother and Mary, insisted and um, mm, wanted to, to uh, uh, describe areas uh, as individuals. Uh, and they described, uh, actually, the, uh, wh what they said, uh, it's um, that uh, we cannot uh, um, assess uh, areas uh, we cannot um, uh, um, uh, we don't have properties uh, um, uh, uh, properties uh, that are um, uh, sufficient and um, uh, 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 <laughs> sorry I um, Actually, areas they don't have instances, so um, we don't have properties uh, uh, that are not changing. Uh, some properties that uh, every area can have uh, this this kind of a set of properties, but um, each each um, example of uh, area um, has its own. Um, uh, uh, it is composed by, by, by parts, so these parts are uh, mm -hmm. species, and uh, the region, the geography, the uh, geographical um, um, uh, region, um, and uh, they change uh, through time. Uh, in, in so in in the. Uh, manner of uh, evolution. Um, so that's why, um, and this, this is a very similar um, approach um, uh, that we use uh, in biology for species, uh, but um, uh, I tried to show that it, firstly it's not simple because because species already, uh, we have organisms to, to, um, uh, to species uh, are treated by organisms, but for uh, by geographical areas, it's not the same. We don't have the same objects that are uh, di directly observable 
and um, that can be considered as individuated uh, objects. Um, and um, mm, yes, I, um, I don't know if I have <laughs> finally answered, but uh, yeah. yes, there is enough time. There is not, there is uh, yeah, we know we have another we have another ten minutes. You're good. You're okay, good. Sure. So I, I, I'm not sure about details of your uh, proposal. So you want to distinguish um, you want to distinguish um, the way philosophers do ontology, and this ontology is not of uh, interest to scientists, right? That's what you said, more or less. Uh, yes. Or tell me if I Yes. And then uh, classifications that are uh, based on scientific method, right? Yes. But so, as, so as I take it, in general, scientists they don't care about what philosophers do. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how other way. You, I mean, unfortunately, but so in practice, scientists they don't they don't care about whether something is an, an entity or not, as long as they can you know um, manipulate it and, and, and make experiment out of it. Um, um, so so I, I'm not sure to what extent this uh, can help philosophers. <laughs> Um, and also, so more to the point, let's say, uh, you, you want to distinguish between um, classificatory concepts, right? Um, so you want to distinguish between classificatory concepts, which are um, categories, so linguistic entities to some extent, and then individuals. But I think what, what a lot of people want to say is that classificatory concepts, they map onto individuals to some extent. Uh, so, um, hey, if okay, you can say something about it, how that relates to your proposal. Uh, um, uh, uh, so, fir firstly, I, I um, uh, well, yes, already, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so there is scientist, actually uh, Malte Beck is, is a scientist that is um, uh, very prominent uh, uh, on, uh, um, and uh, he's working on classification of uh, biographical areas. So um, he has stated that uh, actually an ontological investigation would be of no interest for, for um, <coughs> a scientist. Uh, but um, I really think, uh, and I, my position is quite similar of that. Uh, actually, uh, Thomas Pradeau and Malimuan uh, have um, uh, wrote a, a paper recently um, that is uh, about uh, doing philosophy in science, and um, I think uh, uh, it is. It is important, it is actually very important um, for scientists to let philosophers uh, uh, investigate uh, the entities and concepts uh, they are working with. Um, because um, because uh, uh, a lot of the time, it there is a scientific stagnation. Uh, the, 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 the scientists are uh, debating on uh, <coughs> things that are not um, finally and are not clarified. And I think a philosopher can really help, help uh, to this point. And um, exactly um, uh, here. Uh, for example, the debate on spacious and biographical areas, it's that uh, 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 most of the scientists are, are, um, are not interested uh, to consider uh, areas as classes, so are rejecting uh, all the methods that are, are um, using uh, spacious or areas as classes. But, uh, this is not correct because it's a different thing to talk about the nature um, of an entity and to um, so the nature of an entity in the context of uh, 
uh, evolutionary biology would be uh, to consider it as uh, <coughs> a historical entity, uh, uh, an evolutionary entity, a product of a contingency. Uh, so for me, that, that would be uh, uh, the ontological investigation. Uh, and um, on the contrary, uh, uh, the discussion on whether uh, such an entity is an individual or a class uh, would be more of, um, of, of, an, uh, of an operational investigation how to uh, delimitate uh, such an object, such a, uh, a material object, and how uh, we represent them, uh, how we represent them uh, within scientific mm -hmm. methods. Uh, because uh, all these entities are, are nowadays are represented uh, largely by uh, methods uh, implemented by algorithms and, uh, and uh, mathematics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you. So, oh. so th thank you very much. I'm quite sympathetic to the claim about you, the useless philosophy, so, <laughs> so that's okay. But, uh, but uh, I was surprised about certain claims that you make, and maybe I, I will say things you know, but <clears throat> your project is very close to David Hutter. You, you don't seem to, maybe you, because David Hull argue against class, okay? And after that he says individuals, because that's, if it's not a class, individuals. But he does not stop there. He says, oh, what kind of individuals? Historical individuals. Historical individuals are not the metaphysical individuals of Aristotle. And after that he's, he spin in gen identity stuff, and it's exactly what you need. Because Gen identity is a way to individuate individuals that is very close to practice. So you look at how scientists individuate stuff through time, and you call that that <laughs> gen identity, and that becomes what you, we can discuss: is it metaphysical or not, or is it metaphysical? No. So it seems to you you have a very David Hall project, <laughs> and that would be a frame that will bring philosophy back in your project. But the philosophy that is not traditional in metaphysical individuals, but these gen identical individuals that are difficult to define, defined by their history. And, uh, so it's very odd. Uh, <coughs> Gislin, and it's clearly not other people defining individuals in biology, but it's very close to David Hall. Maybe it's superficial reading of what you do. Thank you. Uh, probably. I, I'm not uh, really, yes, I'm not yet really sure um, about it, but um, I, yes, I, I, I'm very interested um, on, on that problem that, that uh, uh, species are used as uh, categories on classifications and um, at the same time for me, that I, I'm so I'm, I have rather a, a, a scientific realist view. Uh, uh, it's not the species that exist in nature. It's uh, uh, <laughs> it's the object, so uh, organisms, and but even. That question is uh, not a simple one because uh, uh, after that we, we have to question uh, um, what is an organism, what is a uh, biological individual. As I said, there, there, there is a, an effort to, to uh, and there is uh, a work um, uh, uh, who, who uh, works on uh, colonies on bacterial colonies, and they investigate if, if such a bacterial colony uh, can be considered as an individual. So there are a lot of uh, questions, uh, even on what is an organism, and if a biological individual um, have to be directly uh, um, uh, uh, attached to, to, to the paradigmatic individual that is an organism, or uh, 
actually uh, Philippe Mann uh, ha had uh, proposed that <coughs> uh, to for ecosystems, for example, to that they would uh, they could be uh, we could have a like degrees of individuality. So uh, probably ecosystems could could be considered as weak uh, individuals. Uh, so in a sense, more um, uh, it's a statistical uh, sense. And it, it uh, accounts for for uh, uh, environmental factors, uh, the interactions uh, 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 at uh, at um, same place and same time of all the uh, uh, abiotic uh, and uh, biotic factors. Um, so probably uh, that would be uh, appropriate and accurate also for biogeographical areas. But um, biogeographical areas have uh, uh, a different characteristic. Sorry, I think we have to leave it there. My apologies. Oh, okay. Um, okay. We have about five minutes for the two questions.